Hello my lovelies and welcome back to my channel. Today is episode 3 of our Fabrics 101 series. It's a series that I have on my channel for the beginner sewers and not only, where I talk about various fabrics available in the custom fabric world and most specifically in the oh so pretty custom fabric uh, shop. As always, links to uh, the shop, the Facebook pages, previous videos that I've done will be in the description below, as long as uh, with some of my favorite pattern designers. For today, we are talking cotton woven, which is probably one of the most popular bases. I would say it comes closely right after cotton spandex uh, and bamboo. It is... Um, it is one of those bases that gets people, uh, you know, the two camps. I'm a woven person or I'm a knit person. So it's so popular that there there's people who will exclusively sew with, with woven. Same as there are people who will exclusively sew with knit. So what is cotton woven? This is what we'll be discussing today. We'll talk about various terminologies, um, how you can see it, the abbreviations used in the fabric community, which patterns work great, some care and washing instructions, some tips for sewing it, as, as well as a short description of various types of woven fabric and most specifically then the also pretty custom fabric. So I hope you stick around for episode three and let's get started. Woven is one of the three main categories of fabric, knit, woven, and uh, the uh, non-woven type, which is pretty rare and not necessarily available in the custom world. We've talked about two types of knits already, so today we're going to discuss woven. The, the fabric itself is constructed differently than a knit fabric, meaning that it's usually done on huge looms. We have seen uh, smaller scale looms when we do weaving at home for a DIY project, but what we're discussing right now when we create the basis for the fabric are industrial size looms and uh, all kinds of types. So, uh, we, uh, you can imagine a smaller one, just so you have an idea of how it works, but these are definitely at a much, much larger scale. So to create a woven fabric, you will have thread or um, yarn going vertically, which is the warp. It's called a warp thread. And then you have yarn going horizontally, which is called a weft uh, thread. It goes from left to right. So I will give you, again, I don't want to go in a million specific details. I could sit here and talk to you about different kinds of woven and the technique and the process itself for days on end, but we don't want to do that. I promise not to take more than five minutes discussing the types of uh, woven available, and then we'll focus specifically on the also oh pretty one. But just so you have an idea, so there's huge looms, there's thread, uh, vertically weaved onto it. Um, there's a um, thread hooked onto the looms vertically and we call that warp. And then you weave in between them um, your weft thread, which goes horizontally. And that creates the basic fabric in a nutshell. And it's, that's why we call it woven because it's weaved, it's um, interlaced in uh, between the vertical stripes. So that's why one of the qualities or a disadvantage of woven is that it will fray. So woven as a fabric will fray because it's made of various threads. So once you snag one, the other ones will just... Now imagine these are the four and then you have this. So once I snag this one, you see all the fraying. I'm obviously just making a comparison and using my fingers to show you, but just so it's easier for you to get the idea without getting into too many technical terms. So that's why woven does fray. On the other hand, it's very easy to um, get the, pro the woven squared off, especially when you're quilting, because once you remove a thread, you will basically, uh, to, to square off a woven, you just tear it, in one corner and just rip it off and then you know that's exactly a horizontal line 
because it will not tear like this it will tear across uh, along the weave that's like a side parenthesis so that is how woven is created as far as woven goes that's the style of how the um, fabric is created but there is cotton woven which is what will be uh, what we'll be talking about today there's polyester woven and various types there's a blend there's a rayon woven so uh, the cotton rayon bamboo polyester means uh, which type of thread and which type of fiber is weaved so it is a very common uh, mistake when uh, in the fabric world especially with beginners to say oh i'm looking for some cotton and in their mind they're thinking quilting cotton more specifically cotton woven so cotton itself is a plant and there's cotton knit and there's cotton woven so just by saying oh i like to work with cotton doesn't mean you like to uh, work with woven so if if what you mean is like quilter cotton then you're looking for cotton woven it's a it's a mistake that's commonly made especially by beginners that's why i wanted to make sure that i clarify so woven can be poly cotton rayon so on and so forth depending on the fiber it's used also woven can be um there's many 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 types of woven depending on the type of weave and how it's weaved and this is what i'm going to talk about in the next segment before we get into the various types of weaves in cotton woven i want to uh, uh, mention the abbreviations and the terminology you might see in the fabric or so you know what it refers to most common you'll see cotton woven which is a correct terminology then you'll see cw obviously an abbreviation for cotton woven you'll see woven but then you have to verify if it's the one you want because if you see just woven it could be cotton woven it could be uh, canvas it could be a poly blend it could be a, a different woven so you have to verify what you're looking for you might see it as cotton satin and we'll we'll talk about that in just a second so most often you'll see it as CW or cotton woven and the fabric is 100% cotton so both the warp uh, and uh, the weft thread are made with 100% cotton that is what cotton woven is now as far as the styles of weave you have first and foremost a basic weave like I, we talked about before straight vertical threads and horizontal threads that are weaved in between pushed to create that tightness and so on and so forth again I could go on and on about the process and if you want I, I can make a separate video about that but it will be a long one uh, but that is a basic weave so one one kind of like the lattice pie that I was mentioning in the other episode can you tell I like pies um, it's um, when you do a lattice pie that's a basic weave that's one most commonly um, encountered in quilting cotton uh, Joanne quilting cotton is a basic weave I have this piece here because I wanted to show you how easily it is to to tear and I'll post a picture of how it looks a uh, close-up here for now let's see if it focuses there so you can see so it's simple up down up down weave and you can see the fraying like i was saying see one thread this is the fraying i can take one thread and it leaves me like a little fringe um, the second style it's called a basket weave a basket weave is basically two usually but it can be more than two two weaves um, two rows horizontally two rows vertically so they go by two by two so it kind of looks like a basket that's why it's called the basket weave and you can see that one in fabrics like the oxford style um, the oxford type of fabric mainly used for shirting so a uh, basket weave is not as resistant it's um, because it, there's more holes if you look at it 
it will um, stain easily, but it's softer and drapier. That's why it's used for shirtings. A third type of fabric, and it's one that you, you will see in uh, the custom fabric world, it's satin, S-A-T-E-E-N, not satin, satin. Satin is basically kind of like the sister of satin. <laughs> I don't want to say the, the good sister and satin is the evil sister, but I just said it. <laughs> I'm not a fan of satin. I'm really not. Now, a cotton satin woven, I like, <laughs> but I like a um, regular satin, like a nightgown satin, I, I don't like sewing with it, but it's very pretty. Satin, which is the one that I've seen in custom fabric world, uh, is a weave type that has the floats going horizontally meaning what is a float the float is basically uh, the part the fiber that's on top of the um, of the yarn so you go up down up down up down when you weave the one that's on the top that's called the float so that one when you do a satin uh, type of fabric you basically weave you go down up and then you skip three um, vertical threads and then you go back up down and skip three up down skip three so on and that creates the floats horizontally and then when you start the next row you start one more one here so uh, it creates that diagonal float with the horizontal float whereas satin the one that i don't like the one uh, uh, used in uh, like night gowns and evening gowns satin has vertical uh, um, floats which means you do one two three whatever and then you skip three rows well going up not down you skip three rows and then you start again so it creates those um uh, floats vertically that is again going into specific but the important thing about satin cotton is that it has a nice shine to it it has a nice uh, soft structure satin does tend to snag because of those floats instead of being tight woven uh, it it has the tendency to snag a little easier because of the way it's constructed Another type of weave that's commonly uh, encountered in the fabric world is twill. The twill type weave uh, kind of looks like uh, it's on, it's, uh, instead of being weaved vertically, it looks like it's weaved on a diagonal because of the way uh, it's constructed. And it has a uh, great resistance, it, it's very durable, that's why it's used for a lot of um, garments that require durability. You'll find twill in um, denim, and you know how, how strong denim is, that's the type of weave that they use when they make denim. Uh, canvas has um, a twill type of weave. Another type of wheel, two more that I want to mention briefly because I haven't really seen them in the custom world. One is a crepe, which can, it's like a chaotic weave if you ask me. If you, if you zoom it with a magnifying glass, it looks chaotic. Like there's, to create that texture, there's like skip up, down, then it's, it's, it's a mess. <laughs> but it gives that beautiful texture. Same thing for the ribbed, uh, style of weave which is um, again created by uh, weaving more let's say you weave two then you go under two and then the, uh, under one and then the next one you go over two under one and you create that ribbing effect that a thick um, you know that thick look of some of the weaves in fabrics again if you take a magnifying glass to all kinds of fabric uh, types you have around your house you'll be able to see exactly what i'm talking about i again i don't want to make this video three thousand years long and get into too many details and uh, about how the fabric is created because i could go on and on uh, i just wanted you to have a brief idea of various type of weaves and we can discuss further in details if you want me to 
but I want to go back to the fabric in question to the also pretty cotton woven and uh, what type of fabric it is and how to wash it and um, what to use it for let's talk also pretty custom fabrics cotton woven this is again one of their most popular bases because of the variety of uses that you can have for cotton woven it is 100% cotton so 100% natural fibers it it comes in both custom printed as you can see here and solid colors look at this gorgeous solids uh, this is just a snippet of all the colors available on the website so we will uh, discuss both of them together it is a beautiful soft cotton that uh, these again are not washed and with cotton woven the more you wash it i feel that the softer it will get so uh, it even if it may look a little stiffer when you get it although this to begin with it doesn't look stiff doesn't feel stiff i felt stiff cotton woven and this is not it it's soft from the get-go but once you wash it it gets even softer so it feels great to the touch it is a beautiful medium weight it's um i would say maybe compare it to the kana cotton that you can find the joans it is definitely not like their uh, inexpensive quilter cotton and again this is the inexpensive quilter cotton from joan and i'll post a close-up of the actual uh fabric a very um, zoomed in close up this way you can see the difference of a quilter cotton that's the inexpensive kind and a great quality custom um, fabric this is 150 uh, to 160 gsm and i believe it's the same thing for the solids there are there they are definitely comparable in um, weight and feel so you can absolutely mix and match them i love that about also pretty and same thing with bamboo and same thing with cotton spandex their solids while they will never match 100 percent because of the way they're done they are extremely well uh, coordinating and weight wise which will give uh, your garment um, you know it will make it look cohesive you're not using a flimsy fabric and then a structured one so definitely made to go together and stretch your back for uh, the custom print the uh, weight is uh, like i said 150 to 160 gsm i also i also weighed one yard of uh printed and one yard of solid and they're also similar as you can see here in the i've also weighed one yard of each uh, solid and um, printed printed and solid and they're about the same uh, um, weight in ounces they're about 7.5 give or take uh, 0.1 ounce depending on the fabric uh, and the print as opposed to the the previous two um, neat ones that we've talked before the width of uh, the solid and the print is pretty much similar they're both uh, the custom printed one is 58 to 60 inches and this one is 60 inches so this time they're pretty they're similar in width the this is not a 70 inch it's a 60 just like this one however if you compare it to your regular uh, not apparel regular quilting cotton from joanne those come in 44 inches so uh, if you compare prices for a solid from joanne to a solid from also pretty don't just look at the price look also at the quality flimsiness and great quality <laughs> But again, this is the one of the most inexpensive one. There is more expensive one than this at Joanne. Um, also, look at the width of the fabric. 
So I highly recommend the Oso Pretty Solids for your garment and not only make creations and especially for quilts. This would be amazing for quilts, but we'll get to that in just a second. So um, as far as stretch and recovery goes, like we've touched last time, there is obviously zero stretch to the um, woven fabric because of the way it's created and where there's no stretch, there's no recovery. The only stretch that you will see with a woven fabric, including these, is on a bias. So instead of cutting your fabric like this, you cut on a diagonal on a bias, and that is basically a mechanical stretch given by the fact that you're cutting on a bias. It's not a stretch given by the fabric content like it is with the knit. So this is 100% uh, cotton woven, so zero stretch. How do you know if a fabric is 100% cotton? There is a super quick, easy test that you can do at home. Be very careful and don't let your kids see you do this. It's only for adults. Um, if you have a fabric at home and you're not sure if it's poly, if it's cotton, if it's a blend, what you can do is just cut a little corner off of it and just put a lighter to it. Polyester will melt. So if there's poly in it, you will see it melting whereas cotton will burn. So cotton, because it's a natural fiber, will actually uh, hold the fire and will burn. You'll see that flame on the fabric. A polyester base will melt. So that's a super easy test to do. So if you bought a fabric and you thought it was cotton and then you bring it home and you find that it doesn't feel quite right, just put a lighter to the one end. And if you see it melting, that definitely has polyester fibers in it. But that's just a parenthesis in case there were there are some of you who wanted to test and know how to test the fabric quick and easy at home. Again, be careful, you're working with a flame. Let's talk about colors. Just like we did in the previous two episodes, there is a big difference between the solid and the printed. The solids have a yarn that is, uh, as you can see, the yarn is colored, so this is a yarn dyed um, solid, which means all the yarns are the color and the same color and they're weaved together. Whereas the uh, printed one, you can see the back is white, whereas the solid, the backs and the front are the same. The back is white because this is basically a white uh, uh, cotton woven and then it's printed on top so that's why the back is uh, like that so when you pull it if you would take a microscope to the weave to the thread you're pulling you can see let me see if i can get you because i can see it from here with the naked eye if you take a thread and you look at it i don't know how well you can see it probably not in the camera. You can see that some spots have a dot of colors, then there's another dot of color, then there's a different color, because it is printed on top of the fabric, not in, not the actual thread. So that's why when you pull it, some of it is white because there's no color there. So as far as uh, the, the two go, they coordinate beautifully. Uh, the same green will, for example, not be exactly the same on both uh, fabrics because they're printed differently and created differently, but they will coordinate absolutely beautiful. Also, Pretty does offer a huge variety of solids, so you are bound to find a solid that will go with any of your prints. Look how, just, just take this fabric, for example. Look how many gorgeous colors they're in this fabric. At the end of the day, you could coordinate it with pretty much any of these. They look absolutely, and these are again just five. There's a huge variety uh, in, uh, in um, retail if you just check out the website that I've linked below. But look how beautiful they look together. Absolutely stunning. So we want to keep the beautiful colors vibrant as they are when you first get them. For that, let's chat a little bit about washing instructions. 
I recommend washing in cold water and tumble drying. You could do warm water as well. I highly recommend washing all your woven fabric as soon as you get it to get rid of all those chemicals, except, except if you make quilts. If you make quilts, then a, I'm not a quilter, so I won't go into details because I'm not that knowledgeable and I don't want to pretend I know more than I do because it's not fair for all those real quilters out there. But I, from what I've read upon, a quilter will not wash their woven fabric prior to sewing the quilt, but will wash the quilt after because a woven fabric, and especially a cotton woven fabric because of its natural fiber, will uh, shrink a little bit in the wash. So when uh, you put your quilt in the washing machine, that shrinkage will create that beautiful texture of the quilt. Not only make it softer, but it will give it that texture and quilters do want that after. But that's the only exception. If you make garments, I highly recommend you wash your woven fabric before you use it, preferably as soon as you get it in the house. Again, if you don't know what you're planning on doing with it, whether it's a garment or it's a, a quilt, uh, go by each case scenario. Woven does fray. So because woven frays, what you could also do is, let's say you have a cut of woven and you can see, this is one yard of woven. So this is 60 inches along um, the, from left to right. That's the width of fabric, so that's 60 inches almost. And then the salvage, which is this white band right here, that is one yard, because this is a one yard piece. This will, uh, will ravel, but you won't care that much because you have this extra part that will ravel. I wouldn't worry about that that much. However, if you want to have minimal ravel, uh, raveling in the wash, I would recommend running your serger on the raw edge, so at the top and at the bottom. Run a serger stitch only on that one layer just to keep it from, so only here, just to keep it from raveling. If you want to go the extra mile, you can definitely run a serger stitch along the sides as well and that will definitely yield you the, the minimal uh, raveling as possible, as minimal as possible in the wash and in the dryer. Because for cotton woven, I definitely recommend tumble drying. For, uh, it does tend to wrinkle. I will not lie to you. Woven does tend to wrinkle, especially natural fiber woven, like the uh, cotton woven. So I would recommend once you finish, um, the drying cycle while it's still a little bit warm then you should fold it uh, if you leave it in the washing machine and in the dryer for far too long after it will like hold the wrinkles more um, if you're able to just fold it as when it's still a little warm that's great obviously before you cut anything i highly recommend pressing your fabric because you don't want to put a pattern piece and then it's wrinkly and then when it's you press it it's totally distorted so i recommend pressing your fabric before you cut it with cotton woven the wrinkles will alter the way your pattern fits i also recommend best press i remember last time i couldn't <laughs> couldn't figure out the name i i had the image of the bottle in my mind but i couldn't figure out the name so it's called best press. So I love that for woven fabrics. Uh, just it's like a starchy spray. Works great. Just spray a little bit, iron it at your cotton uh, or linen setting of your iron, and uh, that will get rid of all the wrinkles. And again, I recommend doing that to the fabric prior to cutting it. So sewing with with woven is a little bit more precise than sewing with knit, and we'll get to that in just a second. One advantage of woven, uh, cotton woven is that it really rarely peels. I, as opposed to knit that does tend to peel, cotton woven rarely peels. So it holds its life a little bit better than, than knit does. So that's one advantage of it. Now you have the disadvantage of uh, having to serge the raw edges 
when you get it, but you have the advantages of less peeling. So, you know, there's pros and cons for everything. The, um, I also, I used to use color catcher in the wash. I have stopped because it would catch the colors, but I find that the quality of the custom fabric world is so good lately, or at least the ones that I shop from, that it was kind of a waste of money, the color catcher. They don't um, bleed. I've seen custom, and I will not name names, never, but I have seen custom fabric uh, that bleeds in the wash, but I know not to use that anymore, so I, I've had that mistake happen to me with one fabric and I know I, I don't use it anymore from that specific host. But most of them, and definitely the oh so pretty one, never have I had a problem in the wash if I wash just custom fabric. Now, if you put a store-bought shirt that bleeds, that's a different ballgame. But if you wash your customs only with customs and with oh so pretty customs, there's really minimal to none bleeding in the wash. If you're not sure, definitely uh, throw in a couple of color catchers in there. But not with the also oh pretty one. Save yourself the penny and use it for fabric. So now that we have the woven, we have it washed, let's make beautiful things with it. So what do we use the also oh pretty cotton woven for? For First of all, it is a structured cotton woven. So as far as the drape goes, it has some drape, it's not stiff stiff, so you can see, it does have some drape. Not a whole lot, but it does have some, so it is great for little girls dresses. 100%, so if you sew for little girls, or if you make um, little ones dresses, 1000% recommend. It is beautiful, it sews beautifully, it does have some drape to it, but it still has structure So for those beautiful dresses. So that was would be probably uh, the first use for this, would be little girls, little kids dresses. Everyone can wear dresses if you ask me, but I digress. Little kids dresses uh, in, um, in this beautiful custom cotton woven. Another category in itself would be like we mentioned before quilts due to the weight and the uh, structure of this woven it's not flimsy is not super uh, Thin it makes gorgeous quilts. It is the perfect weight for a quilt I don't know if you're familiar with the quilting cotton from Joanne Those are a little stiffer I've made in my early early sewing days. I've made dresses little girls little kids dresses from it, but um, This one is softer, so I would highly highly choose an also pretty custom woven over a uh, Joanne Quilter cotton because this one is definitely softer. It drapes a little better so you get the most bang for the back if you sew for your little ones and you're also a quilter a third category uh, would be uh, bags. Oh man, this is amazing for bags. Like if you don't want to make vinyl bags, quilter cotton bags is great. You will be interfacing it. I would not use it as it is. But again, as a, as a bag maker, you know that the, you do have to interface your fabric. So this, absolutely gorgeous. And because some of the bags, bag patterns um, are uh, minimal hardware, uh, minimal uh, zippers and whatnot, you can actually put it in the wash. Well, between you and I, I put vinyl bag in the wash. <laughs> it was fine, but I don't know if I'm supposed to say that out loud. <laughs> but the, this cotton can definitely go in the wash even after you make a bag. Again, keep in mind, cotton does shrink. So I would pre-shrink it for a bag if you plan on washing it. Not a lot of people plan on washing their bags. So if you don't plan on washing your bags, you don't necessarily have to pre-shrink it. But if you know you're making a beach bag, a big one, that you're going to wash over and over again, and that's okay, 
just pre-shrink your cotton because you don't want the cotton to shrink and then the interfacing that's attached to to not do anything and then it gets wrinkly and weird looking and so keep in mind the uh, long-term use of whatever you're making so if you plan on washing the back pre-shrink it if you don't then it's fine to use it as it is accessories would work great with the cotton wool when you can make hair bows you can make hair ties uh, you can make masks lord knows we've made enough masks to last us a lifetime but this is great for that because it's 100 percent cotton you can make little pouches for all kinds of stuff i have a closet full of pouches and most of them are made with cotton woven i use them when i pack when i travel you put underwear in one you put um, socks in another one you put makeup in a different one and so on like you can never have enough pouches if you ask me and they're the nicely organized in the in the luggage there you can uh, use this for pants if you make pants you can use it for adult pants or um, children's pants which brings me to uh, pajamas the classic Christmas pajama is my kids love it. My little one is obsessed with a button-up classic. Just ask my friends who have seen him in the summertime. He still wears his Christmas woven pajamas. I don't know. He's, he loves that. So woven pajama pants and uh, those button-up with the color pajama pants. Oh, I love those. One of my favorite is... Uh, I want to say... it's For sure it's so a little seam but i can't remember that i think it's it's holiday nights the pattern itself but check out so a little seam i've done a sew along on my channel a while back for their pajama with woven with the custom woven and it's perfect for that there's a ton of designers out there that have little girls and little kids dresses like made for mermaids patterns for pirates you can find some of love and ocean uh, Sinclair has started adding some kids patterns but they don't have that many and I believe most of them are neat right now uh, SLP Co has some beautiful dresses um, I have boys and I sew for myself so I can't say that I'm too too versed in the patterns for little girls since I don't sew to sell anymore but uh, definitely check out uh, all the indie patterns that you can find on the internet most of them do have woven um, kids garments again pants would be would work great um, there's like lounge pants that you could work in woven I would however not use the custom cotton woven for adult apparel uh, dresses most adult woven dresses have uh, a need for much drapier much flowier fabric like a rayon shawley or um, even an oxford um, something with a lot more flowiness because as an adult once you put this you can put uh, darts and whatnot and zippers and whatnot but you don't want it to be to look too boxy while it has some drape this fabric it's not see it's not super super drapery for an adult garment so i would not make myself this unless it's a button-up shirt a button-up shirt would work great for this but a strappy summer flowy dress would not work so again something you could look into to sew for the whole family would be a button-up shirt there's little girls little boys men adult women button up all kinds of button up options patterns for pirates has the lumberjack more sporty one the new love notion one <sighs> i can't think of the name oh and it does have a like a video course with it it's the one of the newest love notion patterns it's a button up that comes in uh, adult size a lot of designers oh the charlie for little boys the charlie from made for mermaids but they also have little girls options so definitely check up check out button up options this would be perfect for it another use and i've done that back in my previous home not in this one 
you can make home decor and accessories with it you can make window decorations um, you can make yourself some um, curtains with it you can make tablecloth with it you can make napkins for the holidays just imagine all kinds of custom uh, custom maybe not this particular one but a, a Christmas one for your table because it's structured it's it's amazing for that valance valance was the word. I keep looking at my valance here in the corner of my eye it's like what is the name of that the part that goes on top <laughs> I've made valances with this so you can use it for that um, cotton gives you a whole range of sewing again you can take it from garment making to accessories to home decor to um, quilts so pretty much anything you can think of and i will end this um, as far as pattern goes with a very important rule of thumb very important i haven't mentioned it in the other two videos but i want to mention it now if a pattern calls for neat fabric do not use woven do not there is no need there's no amount of zippers or uh, elastic that you can put in the garment to make a neat pattern work with woven and look perfect now if it's gonna look uh, it, it will I mean I, I won't stop you I won't come in your house but I will never recommend using a neat pattern with woven the reverse is not necessarily true if you have a pattern that requires woven fabric then you can definitely use neat now it, the look may not be the same but it will totally work but if your pattern calls for a knit do not use woven i don't care which woven you have do not use woven no amount of zipper will take will give you the ease in the arm will give you the ease in the that's not in the actual pattern so rule of thumb last but not least i want to leave you with a couple of tips for sewing uh, cotton woven let's end with a few tips for working with um, custom cotton woven especially the also oh pretty one I've mentioned before about surging the seams before you wash it that will help you with the unraveling I've also mentioned before about pressing your fabrics and steaming your fabric after you wash it but before you cut your pattern pieces uh, this way your pattern pieces will be exact the, the wrinkle can distort the way the pattern looks next I wanted to mention uh, the needles uh, and it's pretty easy actually woven cotton woven and especially this one is I would say one of the easiest fabrics to sew on a serger on a sewing machine uh, with the the less the least expensive machine possible this is not finicky you will love sewing woven absolutely i find woven to be a lot easier to sew than knit as far as uh, using your your um, sewing machine instead of serger so uh, super easy to sew you it uses a standard needle so you don't even have to look for crazy type of needles and some that are maybe not even available in your local quilt shop everything is pretty much available online though these days um, I would use a, like I said a universal needle a size 12 average would be great for this you can even go to a size 10 for this woven another tip that I have for you is definitely interface your fabric if you're making accessories like bags hats bows don't skip the interfacing because this fabric is not thick it is a medium weight but you need much more structure for a hat or a bag so definitely interface it add um, whatever is required by the pattern as far as sewing goes when you sew garments with woven fabric very 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 important and this is probably my number one thing that I wanted to mention and it differs from knits you, I told you in the knit when we did knits videos you can definitely sew a garment or exclusively on your serger with the knit and it will hold just fine woven fabric 
do not use a serger to sew fabrics together. Do use a serger to finish the raw edge and prevent it from unraveling, but do not use your serger to put together the garment. A sewing mas machine stitch is a different stitch than an overlock stitch, a serger stitch. A, a serger stitch is a chain stitch, which means you pull one, it will unravel, kind of like a knit. That's why it works great really with knits. For woven, you need a sewing machine stitch that locks in with every stitch, it locks in the thread. And you need that for woven to prevent raveling. I know, I know a lot of people out there say it's fine, it's fine. It, it could be fine, but the more you use the garment, the better chances of it tearing and ripping and unraveling at the seams if it's surged and just surged and not stitched. So, to get a properly constructed garment using cotton woven, one that would last you a long time, one that you don't have to worry about sitting down, standing up, elbows ripping, uh, side seams or arm size ripping, you would have to stitch with your sewing machine. For finishing the raw edges, go ahead and use a serger. Go ahead and use an overlock stitch or a zigzag stitch on a sewing machine. Do a French seam, but to put together the garment, use your sewing machine straight stitch. Do not use a serger. I hope I didn't scare you too much, but I'm serious about that kind of stuff. Also, as always, press, press, steam, steam, press, press, steam, steam. I should make a song off of it. You know, I had somebody one time <laughs> during one of my sew alongs when she did her check-in, she said, yes, I know I haven't pressed it, but I wanted to check in before the cutoff time. <laughs> so I said, oh, did I stress you with the amount of times I said, press and steam your garment doing the so long she goes well you you did mention it a few times i do that but it's important it, it really is it's important to press and steam your um, stitches throughout the process and at the end of the process if you don't do it throughout i won't say anything but definitely do it after your garment that you put so much work and effort in will look a thousand times better and you don't want to spend the whole day sewing, sewing beautiful ruffles and um, structured a shirt or a colored shirt. Spends hours upon hours, never press it and it looks mwah. When it would take you like five minutes to press it mwah, and make it look absolutely perfect. So steam and press, okay? Pinky promise, cool. All right, my friends, this is the end of today's episode about custom woven as always leave in the comments below any questions you might have regarding woven regarding also pretty woven i'll link everything that i've been mentioning as always and uh, also in um, the videos from the playlist with the fabric 101 section and um I'm not sure what we'll be talking about in the next one. I'm thinking based on my preferred fabrics, I might want to talk about plush next for garment and um, blanket making, but I don't know. I don't know, let me know below if, there is a, if you have a preference, what should we tackle in the next episode. As always, thank you so much for watching, for subscribing if you like my channel and for always having a nice comment for me. I really, really appreciate, appreciate all of you. Mwah. Talk to you in my next one. Bye.